Welcome to The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Today, my guest is Serena Farb. Serena is a vegan educator, public speaker, and liberation activist working to make the world a better place for all beings. As a former science teacher and lifelong vegan, Serena focuses on combining heart and science to empower individuals to think critically, see past corporate propaganda, and to live ethically. Serena is touring the country in her vegan van, giving lectures and workshops on ethical and sustainable living. Stick around. I want to introduce her to you. Hi, Serena. How are you? Hi, Nancy. I'm doing well. Thank you so much. So I know that you are doing a vegan tour, and we're going to talk about that. But first, tell us about how you came to veganism. Yeah, so I think I have a fairly unique um, vegan story, which is that I was actually born and raised vegan from conception, technically. <laughs> so awesome, awesome. Yeah, so and you I, survived. I, I did. I'm here, 28. I've done competitive gymnastics, cross country, run half marathons. Um, I think I'm fine. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> So go ahead with your story, how, how you came. So you were born vegan. So yes. that was your story. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, so I was, I was raised that way by my parents. But then I feel like what's important to share, too, is that, you know, they talked a lot about, you know, why we were vegan and did a lot of education while I was, you know, growing up. So it wasn't just something that, you know, they did or that our family just did. It was, you know, I understood the reasons why from a very early age. And then with that, they kind of decided that when I was about seven years old, once I could read and once they had taught me via actually a set of, you know, like flashcards, all these different ingredients that we might find on food labels, casein, whey, gelatin. Um, once I knew what those ingredients were and how they were made, my parents basically gave me my own food choices when I was about seven. But the way they framed it wasn't like, you know, you don't have to be vegan anymore. It was up until this point, we as your parents have read labels and made informed choices and decided what food you eat. Now that you can read and you know this information for yourself, when you're outside our home, because they were clear, you know, our home would always be vegan. It was, you know, and they would still choose what I ate at home because they were buying and making the food. But it was when you're outside the home with friends or at school and they offer you things, now it's up to you to read the label and make an informed decision for yourself. So when I was seven, I really chose veganism for myself with all that information. And, you know, the only thing that really changed is when kids would ask me, you know, why can't you have this? I would say, I can, I choose not to. Awesome. You know, that is great. Your parents should be mentors to other um, vegan parents, you know, because, you know, people say, hey, how could you tell your kid they can't do this? But the way that your parents phrased it and educated you and gave you the choice and, you know, awesome and kudos to you for choosing to continue on what they had talked to you about and informed you about. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I never wanted to do anything different. Once you know the information, I feel like it was it was very straightforward to me. And your response, I can, but I choose not to. That's even more awesome. So, again, kudos. I'm so Thank you. I'm so <laughs> impressed by that. <laughs> so now you were a science teacher as well. So it's not like you were raised by hippie parents in a commune, you know, whatever. So tell us a little about bit. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about you were a science teacher and um, you taught. You tell yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> I taught chemistry and environmental science as well um, at a high school for a couple of years. And before that, my degree was in biochemistry as well. So I love the sciences. Not really started in high school when I was competing in science fairs. I conducted research at the University of Kansas in a professor's lab. And then that kind of gave me a love of science and basic science research. So I went on to get my degree in that and then um, ended up teaching high school chemistry and environmental science, which I loved. I love teaching. I'm an educator at heart. 
but it just wasn't on point enough for what I care about. I felt like I was teaching students, you know, balancing equations or random chemicals and information that didn't have a direct real world impact on their life. Environmental science was a little bit, you know, more direct in that way. But the the chemistry, which I really do love, not so much. And I just found myself drawn to really wanting to, you know, focus more on, you know, veganism and ethics and sustainability of our diet and food choices to really empower students, you know, to live a happier, healthier, more ethical life in a way that really impacted the world and not just some random, you know, information that they would go on to forget. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and now you are in Florida and you're on this vegan tour and you are heading our way to New Mexico. You'll be here in December. Um, so tell us about what made you choose to do the vegan tour and how's it going so far? Yeah. So when I quit teaching, I basically went into vegan education full time, you know, writing, researching, making videos and content online. But my passion really is speaking and education. And I, you know, did a decent amount of that in the past. And then through the pandemic, I wasn't really able to do that. So I focused on the online content. And now I'm really, you know, I kind of wanted to get back into speaking and speaking to, you know, high schools and colleges and students in particular with an ethical vegan message. And so I actually had no interest in van life or anything like that. It was kind of random how it happened. I had a friend that had actually built out this van that I'm in as a camper van. So she put solar panels on it, you know, built a bed, storage. She did all of that and had lived in it for two years and then was ready to sell it. And I was thinking, you know, that would be cool to have for speaking trips or, you know, weekend trips or camping. Um, and then due to like my wanting to travel and a variety of situations, I just decided it would be simpler if I just gave up my apartment. <laughs> so I, I decided to do it full time and I sold half my stuff and then put what was left in storage and moved into this van full time. And then decided since, you know, one of the things I'm really passionate about is the idea that we are all walking billboards or walking advertisements for the values we care about, the, the world we want. And, you know, I believe we should be the change we want to see. So I figured what better way to do that than also cover the entire outside of the van with educational vegan information so that no matter where I'm going, what I'm doing, I'm hopefully planting seeds of compassion and just getting people to think and raise awareness you know, driving down the street or sitting in a parking lot. That's awesome. And, and what you said is so true. I keep trying to emphasize that when I talk to people uh, or when I post on social media, we are our own medias, our own advertising agency, because as we know, the government is not moving forward to do the right thing for everyone, not just earth, but humans and animals. You know, they're all because, of course, the mighty dollar has a lot to do with that. So we have to be our own uh, media to tell people and, and, and inform others who are still under the illusion, confusion that our government and our society has um, raised us with. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, we're powerful, all of us we set a powerful example for others about what we care about. So I'm doing that in the van while also traveling around speaking, giving, giving presentations and, you know, joining local activism and groups um, whenever I can as I go. Yeah, that, that is, ter that is um, terribly important for us all to do. And uh, to remember, like you're traveling around in the van and your van is all decked out with vegan messages, which is awesome. You're going around the country um, talking about veganism, giving workshops and, you know, sharing on social media and, uh, and all the platforms that one can, uh, whether it's your own posts or other people's posts is very important to our movement because without it, I think that without social media, we would still be back in the old ages when no one knew what veganism really was. <laughs> yeah, social media is very powerful. That is, that's very true. 
And, and I think Absolutely. that that's why a lot of organizations don't like social media or people, you know, who have a lot to gain by keeping us uninformed, uh, hate social media. Right. Or mess with the algorithms and try and suppress information that goes against corporate interests. <laughs> Now, you have a YouTube channel uh, where you talk about different topics, um, and you also have a blog post. Yeah, so I have a website, bornvegan.org, and there's links on that, To I have a podcast and YouTube channel, Instagram. All of that is linked on my website. More information about my vegan van and van tour is up there as well. Um, and then I do write some articles and essays on there. And all of that's on my website, bornvegan.org. And then my YouTube channel is also Born Vegan, um, if you search that on YouTube. And my Instagram is bornvegan1. And Instagram is where I'm probably the most active right now. And that's where we could follow where you're going and what's happening during this tour, correct? Yes, yes. And, and I have an email list on my website that if people sign up for that too, they can get direct updates as well of where I'm going and what I'm doing. Well, kudos to you for being brave and being out there informing the world what uh, our government and other health facilities should be doing. And um, I look forward to seeing you in person here um, soon. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward to that as well. Very excited. Um, December, um, I got like, you got to think about what the date was. I think it's the 15th that you're here. Let me just, uh, double check that. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking oh. as well. <laughs> uh, let me double December check 15th. That. December 15th, right? Okay. Yes. Um, and so we want to make sure that you are welcome with open arms. So Albuquerque, New Mexico, come on out. She'll be here in a, in a, uh, another at the sanctuary will you be at the sanctuary the karuna as well yeah I'm, I'm planning to go there i don't know we it might be iffy because of the weather up in the mountains at that time okay but, um, but you'll yeah. be here and i will definitely keep everyone posted when you're here uh about where you will be and um safe travels and see you soon Thank you so much. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you for joining us and another Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Remember to check out our website, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Live vegan.